The last one is a bone-chilling story of an explorer who encountered something more terrifying than a ghost in a famous ghost town in the Norwegian archipelago of Svalbard. Five explorers named Giselle, Alice, Damien, Tyler, and Kylie set off for Pyramiden, an abandoned Soviet coal mining settlement in Svalbard that is now considered a famous ghost town. They are here to film a new video about the creepiest places on Earth for their supernatural vlogging channel. Upon arriving at the place by boat, they are greeted by a silent yet eerie vibe. Everything in the area is abandoned. The group set their camp near the village coast and planned to stay there for three days. After setting up each of their tents, Giselle and Tyler decided to take a nap in each of their tents. At the same time, Alice, Damien, and Kylie went out to ask some locals for directions on the island, since there were still locals working at the restaurants and hotels in this place to accommodate tourists. As they set off to tour the island, Giselle and Tyler took a nap in their tents to rest. Hours into the nap, Giselle woke up to a strange feeling on her legs. She feels like she's being pulled outside of her tent. She thinks it's just a dream, so she lets it keep happening until she opens her eyes and sees something scarier than a ghost, a polar bear pulling her out of the tent. Horrified at what was unfolding in front of her, she screamed and tried kicking her legs to escape the polar bear, but it was useless. The bear kept dragging her out of the tent until it stopped and clawed her legs, causing her to scream painfully. Giselle's scream woke up Damien, who was taking a nap in another tent beside hers. When Damien saw that a polar bear was attacking Giselle, he immediately grabbed a pen flare from his bag and lit it up to try and scare the bear off. As the bear was still attacking and clawing Giselle's legs and lower body, Damien got as close as he could and swayed the pen flare against the bear, causing it to flinch and step back from them. The polar bear was startled and began to run away when Damien threw the pen flare in front of it. Damien immediately went to Giselle, now wounded, and decided to do first aid on her wounds as soon as possible. When their other three friends arrived, they immediately called a boat to pick them up and take Giselle to a medical clinic to treat her as soon as possible. The polar bear exhibit in a zoo in Detroit is a top attraction among families, tourists, students, and most importantly, children. Inside the polar bear exhibit is a two-year-old adolescent polar bear named Benny, born and raised in captivity. The bear is exclusively handled by zoo handlers Troy and Madison, who've been there since its birth. Today will be Benny's third birthday, and the zoo will conduct a special live feeding event to celebrate Benny's milestone. The zoo prepared a special cake made literally out of fish to be given by none other than Troy and Madison. At the beginning of the event, many people have been waiting outside Benny's enclosure for Troy and Madison to enter. After a few minutes, the two handlers entered the chamber with Madison holding the fish cake. Then they sang the happy birthday song to Benny as the bear approached the two of them and sat beside them, staring at the fish cake. The people surrounding the enclosure sang along with Troy and Madison as they blew out the candle on top of the fish cake and removed it so Benny could eat it. Troy begins to pat Benny's head for being a good bear since he was born, as Madison is giving the fish cake already to the bear. Everything was going fine when, unfortunately, Benny began to growl at Madison, causing her to flinch and take a few steps back away from the bear. Troy tried to pat Benny's head to calm him down, but the bear suddenly bit his hand. Troy screamed as Madison and the visitors were shocked by Benny biting Troy's hand. Madison went over to Benny to try and stop him from biting Troy's hand, but Benny won't let it go out of his mouth. Troy could already feel Benny's teeth penetrating his skin as Madison tried to hold Benny back and stop it from biting Troy's hand even more. Benny unexpectedly let go of Troy's hand, but he had already gone wild before the two handlers knew it. Benny started to growl and grab the fish cake that Madison had dropped and threw away in its pool's enclosure before roaring again and tackling Madison down to the ground. This time, other zoo authorities had decided to enter the enclosure to stop and neutralize Benny, which was immediately successful, with Troy and Madison accumulating injuries. After the incident, Benny was moved into a much more secure enclosure as Troy and Madison would recover first before deciding if they would want to handle Benny again after the incident. 
the polar bear exhibit in that zoo was closed, and the authorities aren't sure when to open it again. The first story was a terrifying experience of a Russian resident when the 2019 mass polar bear invasion in the Novaya Zemlya archipelago happened. It was a snowy afternoon when Igor, a local high school student, peacefully walked on the streets of Belushia Guba after his class. Walking down the road, he notices a commotion in the middle of the crowd. Curious, he approached the crowd to hear what they were arguing about. I swear, I saw a polar bear searching the garbage for food one woman stated. A man stepped in from the crowd and said, we are safe from polar bears here. The people continued to argue as Igor realized that staying longer would be useless. He continued walking away from the crowd until he reached his home. Igor greeted his mother upon reaching his house and headed upstairs to do his homework. While doing his homework, his mother suddenly called him to do an errand. He needs to buy food at the local market since there is a public warning about a polar bear threat. Igor was skeptical about the polar bear threat, but he followed his mother's orders and bought food at the local market. As he walked, he saw a pale white figure in front of the waste containers across the street. Since the mist around the town wouldn't allow him to see things clearly, and the only thing he has are the street lights, it's hard to tell what the figure is. Curious again, he crossed the street to find out. And when he approached the figure, he was surprised to see that it was an adolescent polar bear, not too big, or too small. Igor was terrified and started to run, only for the bear to notice his presence shortly. Steps and thumps were heard as the polar bear chased Igor. While trying to catch his breath, the polar bear caught Igor and clawed his back, causing him to fall face first. Igor screamed for help as the bear jumped onto his back and clawed him again. The bear was growling and scratched Igor's back with his claws until two gunshots were fired beside the bear to scare it away. After hearing the gunshots, the bear immediately backed away and ran from Igor, who was now severely wounded. It was then that he saw that the authorities were the ones who fired the shots and took him to the nearest medical facility for treatment. After the encounter, the local authorities issued a state of emergency as a total of 52 polar bears were seen entering Novaya Zemlya since the Igor incident. The local government called several experts to remove the polar bears from the residential areas and decrease the danger. Young adults Theodore, Asher, and Rocky are three college best friends who decided to camp near the shore of Kaktovik, the city where they live in Alaska. They're part of a 300 resident population of the village, which is famous for its cold weather and most significantly, polar bears. Polar bears are also considered regular residents of the village and visitors from around the world visit the place annually to get a closer look at giant carnivorous animals. Theodore, Asher, and Rocky are so fond of polar bears that sometimes they can see one just right in front of their homes and not complain about it. The three gentlemen set up a campfire after setting up their sleeping bags. They find it peaceful and soothing to camp near the shore because of the cold temperature and the views of the icebergs situated in the waters far from the village. Everything was calm and peaceful after their campfire was now burning bright. Asher decided to sleep first as Theodore and Rocky were left sitting around the campfire. The two talked about their daily lives and college stuff, when suddenly they heard a series of heavy thumps near them. Rocky asked if Theodore heard them too, which he said he did. The two of them were alarmed as the thumping sounds were getting closer, and it might be a wild animal wanting one of them to fall prey to it. And within a split second, Asher just suddenly screamed as something was dragging him from his sleeping bag by his feet. When Rocky and Theodore stared at the creature, it was none other than a polar bear. Asher was screaming at the top of his lungs as the polar bear kept dragging him away from the camp. The bear suddenly stopped after a few seconds as it clawed Asher's legs, causing him to cry out painfully. Theodore and Rocky didn't waste time as they grabbed some wood from their campfire and made sure it caught fire to make a wooden torch before sprinting to where Asher and the polar bear were. When they got to Asher and the polar bear, the bear was about to claw Asher's head when Rocky bravely swung the wooden torch 
as Theodore did the same, causing the polar bear to stop attacking Asher and growl in agitation. The two continued to swing their torches and threaten the polar bear until it was scared away from Asher, who was severely wounded. When the polar bear got away, Theodore and Rocky carried their friend to the village premises to tell their fellow residents what had happened. There, Asher was taken to a health clinic for recovery, while the local hunters decided to hunt down the polar bear that terrified the three young adults. The second story is set in another far-off Russian village, where a bear patrol is caught in a deadly situation caused by an angry polar bear. The Russian village of Rarkapia is under alert as polar bears frequently visit it. Some public activities were canceled, and schools were heavily guarded to protect students and residents from the bears. Some experts have studied the village situation for quite some time, and they all said that the residents should permanently evacuate as the polar bear numbers kept rising. However, some residents refused to evacuate, which is why the locality of Rarkapia decided to form a bear patrol program that would ward off bears that may try to get near the village. One day, the bear patrols decided to roam inside and outside the village for unsuspecting polar bears, and the group included a newcomer named Nikolai. Nikolai and the other bear patrols each rode a snowmobile to help them navigate the snowy lands as they set off to monitor the village and its outskirts. The bear patrols first roamed the insides of the village and reported no polar bear sightings. They declared the area safe and decided to go outside and explore the outskirts of Rarkapia, where bears may frequently stay for a long time. While patrolling, the head of the patrol, named Boris, noticed that one polar bear was resting just a few meters away from the village. He ordered Nikolai to drive his snowmobile near the polar bear and scare it away. Nikolai followed the order as he drove his snowmobile and went near the polar bear. He honked multiple times to scare it away, but it made the bear angry. The polar bear growled as it stood up and decided to chase Nikolai. Terrified, Nikolai started the snowmobile's engine and drove off from the angry polar bear. Unfortunately, the polar bear suddenly jumped at him and tackled him, getting him off the snowmobile and pinning him to the ground. The polar bear growled before slashing Nikolai's torso with its claws, causing him to scream. Boris and the other patrols witnessed what was happening, so they drove their snowmobiles to rescue Nikolai. Meanwhile, Nikolai was being clawed by the bear as he desperately shielded his head with his arm for protection. Determined to live, Nikolai throws punches at the bear's face despite being of no use to survive. The polar bear became angrier and jumped on his body again, causing him to scream even more. A few seconds later, Boris and the other patrols arrived with rifles and fired several shots beside the polar bear to scare it away. Since the Russians prohibit killing polar bears, they can only use their rifles to scare them away with their noise. And luckily, it worked with the bear that attacked Nikolai as it fled from the place immediately. Boris approached the wounded Nikolai and took him to the nearest medical clinic, where he was treated for his wounds caused by the harsh bear attack. After the encounter, the officials decided to evacuate the residents one by one to reduce the occurrence of these kinds of attacks in the future. Kvitoya is an island in the Svalbard archipelago and is widely known as the White Island. The island is located in the easternmost part of Norway and is the closest to the Russian Arctic possession. It is also the most remote island in Svalbard and is entirely covered by ice caps, which explains why it gained the name as the White Island of the said archipelago. Hank and his wife April are among the many tourists on a cruise from Spitsbergen to Kvitoya. The cruise service provides all the tourists with breathtaking views of the nearby Arctic and some animals such as whales, seals, and even polar bears. After the half-hour-long cruise, the tourists were dropped off at the coast of Kvitoya, where they would see a spectacular view of the massive Kvitoyjukulin ice cap in front of them. Hank, April, and the other 18 tourists were amazed by the scenery, so they took pictures and videos to remember their trip here. The island is also known for its large walrus population, which is why some tourists visit this majestic place. Some tourists were even wildlife photographers hoping to get a close shot of the terrifying polar bear or the enormous walrus. 
After viewing the ice cap, Hank and April decided to sit near the coast and have a little picnic, as they were a bit tired from the trip. Their stay at Kvitoya would only last for three hours, until they would be cruised back to Spitsbergen again, so they have to make the most of their visit here on this island. While eating their sandwiches, they suddenly heard the tourists screaming from a distance. The couple thought they were shouting because of excitement, so they didn't mind it and tried to enjoy their time together. In a split second, a mid-sized polar bear swiftly grabs April by her right leg and drags her across the coast. Hank, surprised yet terrified, immediately stood up from where he was sitting and chased the polar bear who was carrying his wife. April screamed for help as the polar bear kept dragging her away from the coast. She could also feel the polar bear's clawed paws piercing her leg already. Hank was screaming as he kept chasing the polar bear in April until some authorities came in, honking their air horns loudly to scare the polar bear away from its victim. The polar bear, now about to bite through April's leg, was startled as it heard the honking of the air horns. As the authorities kept scaring the polar bear away, the animal became agitated and tried to attack the officers instead, leaving April unconscious and wounded. After a few tries of trying to attack one of the authorities, the polar bear decided to go to the coast. Hank, the authorities, and the tourists were shocked by the sudden attack, as April was still unconscious and needed to be taken to a hospital for her recovery. After the gruesome incident, the Kvitoya authorities decided to take better caution and improve their measures regarding the tours to, to prevent such incidents in the future.